All right, moving on, let's actually play with GPT. Um, so OpenAI is not really open, so I don't have the ability to download GPT 3.5 or GPT 4 and play with it from Hugging Face, but Hugging Face does give me GPT 2 and also some more advanced models like GPT J, for example. Uh, but let's go ahead and use GPT 2 because you know, it still does some cool stuff. So the cool thing about Hugging Face is it has this pipeline package that makes things super easy for using these pre-trained models. So all I have to do is say generator equals a new pipeline and its purpose in life is to generate text. So it's a text generation pipeline and the underlying model is GPT-2. And I could replace that with any other model that I find on Hugging Face. Uh, it's that easy, right? So now that I have this generator object where all I did was say what I wanna do with it and what model I wanna use, I can say generator, here's a sentence, complete it for me. So I'm gonna say, I read a good novel. I want, to give you, I want you to give me back up to 30 tokens that completes that thought and give me five variations of it while you're at it. That's what num return sequences means. So let's go ahead and kick that off. And of course your results may be different than mine because there is a random component as to how these things are generated. So it's going off and downloading that pre-trained model for GPT-2 so it's pretty amazing that we were able to download that entire pre-trained model for GPT-2 and actually make some generated text out of it five times over just in that short period of time. So that's pretty amazing. And uh, it gave us five examples of completing that thought of I read a good novel. And you can see that it's uh, quite the mixture of sentiments there. Uh, one word of caution here, this isn't like ChatGPT where they have all these layers on top of it to um, moderate what it says and make sure it doesn't say anything that might be uh, disturbing or offensive. So. Apologies in advance if you saw anything that you don't like. Uh, it looks okay so far here. We can do the same thing again here. So let's say that we want a, a longer response. I could say this movie seemed really long and give it a max length of 300 tokens. And again, give me five responses. Um, I'm doing this on purpose because we're gonna do an example of fine tuning this model later on with IMDB movie reviews where it can talk much more deeply about movies than it can right now. So let's see what happens here. This will take a little bit longer because I'm asking for 10 times as many tokens. So it should take about 10 times as long, which still isn't that long. And we're done. So uh, this movie seemed really long and now it's gonna make up a bunch of uh, facts about some movie <laughs> that it's probably making up for the most part uh, that is really long. So it's a good reminder that these uh, text generation uh, large language models make stuff up at the end of the day. Their job is to generate text that sounds like real human beings writing something, but it's not always accurate. It's just sounding accurate, right? So here we have five different examples where it goes into depth about a fictitious movie that was really long. And it's not talking about, it might even drop the names of specific actors and directors and even what the name of the movie is, right? But um, it's not real, it's not real for people. But let's, uh, let's move on, let's actually type in just the term Star Trek, because that's something we do in our courses. We talk about Star Trek. And I'll, t I'll tell it to give us uh, up to 100 tokens each on that for five responses and see what we get back for that one. That was pretty quick. So this has given us sort of, you know, high level facts about different TV series and movies in the Star Trek universe, right? So nothing too deep here. You can kind of tell that GPT-2 was in part trained on Wikipedia because these kind of sound like synopsis or snips, snippets out of Wikipedia articles for each of these individual series or movies. So interesting. Uh, maybe we can improve on that as well. And if you are using a pro account for Colab, you probably have enough space to actually run GP2-large even. So that's sort of the small GP2 model that, that doesn't even know that much. A, a much larger model with 812 million parameters is also something I can get for free from Hugging Face. Uh, the one we just used only had 137 million parameters. I say only as though that's a small number, but it's not. That's huge for a neural network, right? Let's go even bigger though, almost an order of magnitude bigger. So I'm going to pipe in, I read a good novel again uh, with a maximum length of 30 tokens five times over, this time using GP2 large. And that's going to take a little bit longer to download because that model is 3.25 gigabytes worth of weights and biases and parameters in general. So let's wait for that to come down. But again, that's the magic of hugging face. It's not hard. And if you're on a reasonably fast internet connection, it doesn't even take that long. So we've downloaded all of those parameters and off we go. And now we're saying, okay, create a pipeline using that model for text generation and complete the thought I read a good novel five times. And there we have it. 
It was just that easy. So, you know, this does seem like a little bit more, um, a little more conversant, a little bit more natural sounding than the original model above. So if you compare these responses to the ones that we got up top here, um, it's, a, it's a lot better, right? There's just sort of random stuff here. It's all over the map. It's uh, not necessarily relevant to novels, but with this larger model, it reads a lot more relevant to what we're asking it to do. So more parameters, it turns out, is better, up to a point at least.